Astronomers are pretty darn great at finding things. Sometimes they're so good at it, they find something that isn't even there. There are hundreds of moons in our solar system, most of them belonging to gas giants, with Jupiter and Saturn taking the top spots by far. And we have our lone little moon orbiting Earth. But Mercury and Venus have none at all. A few hundred years ago, though, some astronomers were convinced that Venus did have a moon. Back in 1645, an Italian astronomer named Francisco Fontana was busy doing what astronomers do best, observing the sky. Fontana had created his own telescope and was known for creating woodcuts of his observations of the moon and other planets. And on this specific night in Naples, his telescope was pointed towards Venus. It wasn't just Earth's warmer neighbor he ended up spotting, but a natural satellite orbiting the nearby planet as well. Throughout 1645 and 1646, Fontana would spot this Venetian moon three more times, starting what would become the centuries-long saga of this mysterious celestial object. Giovanni Domenico Cassini, yes, that Cassini, a space probe naming fame, was the next to spot this new moon. While doing some routine observations, he noticed a small object in orbit around Venus. He didn't put much weight on it at the time, opting to leave very few details in his notes. 14 years later, however, when he recognized the familiar satellite, he was certain he found something truly noteworthy. Cassini made a formal announcement that he had observed a moon of Venus, and for a while, that was it. Surely, there were astronomers looking for this moon and seeing if they could corroborate these claims. But records are hard to come by. The next documented sighting came in 1740 from Scottish mathematician James Short. There was an uptick in recorded sightings after that, with many astronomers becoming fixated in figuring out this little moon. Between 1759 and 1768, 29 different observations were taken by 11 other astronomers. It took quite a bit longer for Venus's little friend to get a name, but Jean-Charles Houzeau, former director of the Royal Observatory of Brussels, finally gave it one in 1884, Neith, after a goddess from Egyptian myth. With this many observations from all these trusted astronomers, what happened to Venus's moon? Well, like anyone with a decent telescope could tell you, Venus, in fact, has no moon. But did it? Could these astronomers have been correct in their findings, but unable to verify their claims because something terrible happened to Neith? Probably not. In fact, while many astronomers were looking to corroborate these claims, just as many were coming up empty-handed. In 1766, Maximilian Hell, director of Vienna Observatory, offered that the astronomer seeing Neith might simply be mistaken, stating, The bright image of Venus was reflected into the eye and back into the telescope, creating a smaller secondary image. Doubts continued to be sown until astronomer Paul Struvant published the paper that put a stop to it all by going through each and every recorded sighting of Neith and arduously debunking them one by one. While the details are a bit lengthy, and in French, Strubont's explanations boil down to two main things, mistaken stars and equipment issues. Several of these observations, when lined up with star charts from their specific dates and location, could be easily explained by not other moon in the solar system, but a mistaken star. Our mysterious moon turned out to be no more than a trick of the light, caused by physical issues in the astronomer's equipment. This was the 17th and 18th centuries after all, and while telescopes could still provide far better seeing than the naked eye, they certainly weren't foolproof. Issues with lenses, heat differences, and simple manufacturing mistakes could have easily caused a moon-like object to appear around Venus. Also probably didn't help that when astronomers pointed their telescopes towards the sky, they were fully expecting to see Neith. A clear example of confirmation bias. To back up these claims, Struban did some calculations using apparent size and orbit of the mysterious moon, finding that it would be impossible for an object this size to maintain orbit around a planet as small as Venus. Observational records were estimating that the moon was nearly a quarter the size of Venus. On the other hand, Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede, is 27 times smaller than its parent planet. Struban's report was the final nail in the coffin for Neith. So, as the years went on, our story was swept under the proverbial rug of astronomy, right alongside other tales such as failed space missions and Martian canals. But we shouldn't forget these narratives, because they teach us about the importance of the scientific process and help us avoid making those same mistakes in the future.
Today, we have a good idea of the objects orbiting our sun's planets. Barring the controversial idea of a planet nine past Pluto, the main objects astronomers are searching for are asteroids. And Earth's Trojan asteroids are some of the most elusive and hard to confirm out there. A Trojan asteroid is like any other asteroid, except instead of it being in typical orbit around the sun, like those in the asteroid belt, it follows the path of its parent planet. Jupiter has hundreds of these Trojan asteroids that have fallen into its most stable Lagrange points. These points are where the gravity is balanced between the planet and the sun. And every large object in our solar system has five, two of which are especially steady. When an asteroid passes near these gravity wells, it has the possibility of being captured into orbit, either following or leading its planet around the sun. Earth actually has these asteroids too. But before 2010, none were observed due to the immense difficulty in directly imaging such an object. Not only are they small, but they're also incredibly dim and always sit right on the horizon near sunrise or sunset. This not only causes issues with sunlight, but means that the telescope has to look through a much thicker layer of atmosphere than it would have to if it was pointed more vertically. Despite these difficulties, astronomers working with WISE satellite spotted a little friend leading Earth about 300 meters in diameter. 10 years later, the Pan-STARRS-1 survey telescope in Maui, Hawaii spotted the second of its kind named 2020 XL5. Even with objects as notoriously difficult to find as these, a secondary observation had to be made to determine if 2020 XL5 was really a second L4 Trojan. So astronomers combed through seven years of observations by the Dark Energy Survey and the SOAR telescope. They were able to find enough cooperating evidence to prove the existence of this new Earth Trojan. All this extra work just to confirm that what we're seeing is actually what we think it is may seem like overkill, but without all the double and triple checking, we end up with inaccuracies and moons that aren't real. 